Hey, this is Anthony Babyface Blackburn, professional power slapper in the welterweight division. And you're watching a verbal shenanigans, baby. But Thanks. our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Evil shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. Hello, everybody. Welcome on back to the Verbal Shenanigans podcast. Nice to see you out there. I know you were clamoring for a solo Mike Burlow episode, which in theory could still happen in the next 45 minutes or so, um, mm. depending on, on what happens in, in my personal life. I might get summoned upstairs for the dog who's scratching his face apart and licking everything and has skin issues or the son who can't seem to go to sleep at almost three and a half years old or the baby who can't seem to digest anything and has pooping issues and then at nighttime whenever daddy holds her has a meltdown so it could be any of the three that can take me away from this podcast right now oh and your picture perfect i tell we went through the whole family i'm surprised you didn't say my wife she didn't cook my dinner tonight and by the way i was magnificent as usual yeah, well, it's the truth. I mean, I don't do anything wrong, really. I'm pretty much flawless. As... Well, well, then flaunt it if you're flawless, for God's sakes. And don't hold it in. Don't make me have to pat you on the back and say, go out and get your rewards, get your flowers, son. Listen, I know that you know a lot about, like, telling everyone you're flawless and perfect and that yeah. they could do no wrong and that you believe you're a first-round draft pick in heaven and uh -huh. everything else under the sun. However... Uh, that it doesn't come as naturally to me as it does to you. That's why I'm trying to help you out, man. I mean, they made their first round selection. Round two is coming around. And, you know, you, you, you're you the hot free agent, you know. Maybe, now, maybe you're going to get called up and on the second round. But all this holding it in is not going to help you out. But but how does that work? Like how many round? like does heaven get multiple first round picks? Or does it go like heaven, hell? That's the end of the first round. It's it's just like, I mean, you know, reincarnation's got a draft. Uh, uh, Limbo's got a draft. Uh, hell, all the places. You know, I mean, Dog Heaven's got a draft, too. So, you know, you get, you get picked there. But are, are you a little upset that you didn't get drafted to Dog Heaven and you just went to regular Heaven? Listen, and I'll get my four-year contract with Evan. And when I become a free agent, the the you know the offer's going to come. So it, there's no concerns here. And I establish myself as a phenomenal angel, and then I move over to my dream team. What I find really interesting is that there's contracts in heaven. Like you have to sign and throw up a contract to see how long you're going to stay, or uh, you can get kicked out. Like what is this contract? Oh called? yeah. Listen, when you die, you better make sure your manager comes with you, or you can get screwed when you get up there. And you know? I mean, really drafted, yeah, man. If you get drafted and you don't know all the rules and all the incentives that you could pick up, you can get really messed up. And also, if like you got something terminal in your system, make sure that you hire a hitman to kill your manager, so you're both up there at the same time for negotiations. But I don't understand if you're a first round draft pick at the heaven and you're hiring hitmen to kill people, how that seems to go hand in hand. I mean, I just well, don't get it. Maybe I die. Yeah. Let's see, I die to still establish how great I was in the first round pick. And then the hitman does his job. It's like, no, that doesn't count. I wasn't down there when it happened. So you can't hold it against me. So I'm still the first round pick. So basically. You're on earth, you're a piece of shit, and then in heaven, you you figured out a different way to finagle your way into just being a piece of garbage. Listen, I mean, I I know my worth. I know what's going to happen. I'm, you know, we're, it's going to be a back and forth with all the the saints and whatever. And you know, I'm going to have my representation. I'll get a nice little deal. You know, put in my time, win some heaven championships. And then when the career is established, it's like, I got to go to where I feel most comfortable and home. And that's when I 
spend the later years in dog heaven and all. It's kind of like Messi in Inner Miami. It's, it's now, the same deal. I think I'm following you. The only thing I didn't understand was there's heaven championships. I was wondering if you could elaborate on, on that a little bit. Well, I mean, everybody goes to their lauded groups, you know, limbo and, you know, the atheists go into their blackness and whatever and reincarnation. And then, like, when the year ends, there's like a whole kind of like uh, death Olympics, if you will. Really? Where we determine the most premium athletes uh, from each team. And, you know, that's when I'm going to bring the gold and all instead of the, the gold medal, it's the gold halo. And, you know, I, I know I'm going to represent. I'm going to bring some titles. They're going to put some banners up in the clouds. And, you know, I, I'm my, starting to understand. Myself, however, I'm not a, understanding what the events actually are in this. Oh, it, it's it's endless, Scott. It's what it's literally I'm in heaven. So I can make up the events as I go along. I can do whatever I choose. And you know? I mean, I can even like bring over wait, 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 my wait, wait, dream wait. team from dog heaven and do dog sledding during the death Olympics. So all these people are in a competition, but somehow you make the rules and can do whatever you want in heaven. So you're somehow in heaven in a different pit. tier. Listen, if you put in the work and you were the first round pick, you know you, what you can establish up there. Okay? Good. I mean, it's not my fault. Like, you get picked up by reincarnation in the sixth round and you try to do, like, shot put, but you came back as a butterfly and you can't lift the shot put. It's not my fault. Very interesting, Mike. It's very interesting. You you do enlighten us on this, um, the afterlife. You you enlighten us pretty frequently here. I mean, um, I'm not even sure why I am here on the show anymore. Now that you've done solo shows and um, you, you talk about the afterlife, there's really no point in me living anymore. Well, Scott, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Like I said, I'm the guide for you, and all. It's kind of like quantum leap, and all. I'm your Ziggy. I'm trying to guide you to get you to your next destination, and uh, I don't want you to just end the journey right here and now. So, I mean, let, just listen to my spirituality, understand I know a lot, and just let me guide you through all this. How many guys have Ziggy references that are also in heaven? Is that a, a common term up there, or uh, it, it's a niche kind of thing in heaven? But again, being the first round pick, you know, it's like I could play outfield, I could do some third base. You know, you gotta you gotta be flexible for these Death Olympics, if you will. Now, interesting enough, you sound so experienced. Is this like? one of your multiple terms on earth? Like, have you come back to us almost like the Messiah? Because you seem to know a lot about something that hasn't happened yet. Scott, I, I, all I can say is no spoilers right now. Okay. And I mean, I mean, you, you seem to understand some plots right now, but I can't confirm nor deny no spoilers. And I'll let the movie come out. And then let everybody understand what really happened. No, 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 no. This is a podcast. It's like trying to tell everybody right now the what? Th this is a podcast we're supposed to be like entertaining and 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 um, you know interesting to listen to. So I want to know right now: Are you claiming that you're the yep. Messiah on the podcast? No, Scott. I mean that's that's like a retirement goal, and I'll be in the Messiah, whether it's in regular heaven or dog heaven or wherever. I choose to end my career. I mean, who knows? Hell might ha give me a good contract. You know, we have to consider everything in this lifetime. So, or in this case, the after lifetime. So just uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And then you'll let the movie scroll right in front of you. Okay. It, it, the Quantum Leap movie scroll, or is this the, your own person? That was the television show, Scott. Please. You're, you're embarrassing. Mm -hmm. uh, calling Quantum Leap a movie. It was a TV show in the 80s, and it came back for a short period of time. It did. In the it 20, did. 20s. Um, all right. So do you think maybe by episode 500, you'll be ready to reveal the end of this? I feel it's like when you um, watch a TV show, you're not going to get the answer directly, but I'm going to put little Easter eggs in each episode. So you're like, oh. That's what I should be thinking. Oh, 
That's what happens when it dies. You know, stuff like that. Just keep listening, gain all the information, bring it all together, and then you're going to have, you know, your workbook ready for you when you pass away. All right. Well, good to know. Um, if you are a new listener just tuning in, um, this is exactly God what the bless show, you. Th- this is exactly what the show is. I'm not going to say like this is not what we normally do. This is pretty much what we normally do. We pretty much rant about Mike's greatness. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, all, he goes off on a tangent. Then we bring someone interesting on. Then we play some dumb game, and that's that's essentially the podcast. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even gonna build it up anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. this this is pretty much it, but <laughs> Mike, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about the big thing going on this week. Um, you know, um, is it me? It's um, no, it is uh, captivating the country. It is uh, people are on the edge of their seat. Um, they're getting ready. Mm-hmm. Um, they it's polarizing. Some people love it. Some people think it's disgusting. Some people think it's um, you know, this person is not the right choice. Um, and you know what I'm referring to. Again, I'm thinking it's me. No, you know what I'm referring to. Um, some might think I'm referring mm-hmm. to the presidential debate, but no, Mike. I'm referring to the news story that captivated the entire country this week um, with a little known woman from somewhere um, that basically gave us advice to, to spit on a dong. And she became an overnight internet sensation. Like, I couldn't even keep up with the amount of memes and videos and hawk to a related stuff. Um, Mike, are you familiar with the video? I guess I uh, saw it. Um, she seemed to be having a really good time mm-hmm. when she was explaining the situation. Uh, like, even the host, I don't know. It's kind of like a, the old school Jay Leno or maybe Danny Jackal. Yeah, just sometimes man Marshall, on the street stuff or something. Person yeah. on the street asking crazy questions. Look at you being all like, PC uh, here in 2024. Person on the street. Wow. Oh. You, you are know, so maybe. you are so woke. <laughs> you can hear me. Hey, what's hey, up, man? Anthony. How are you? Fucking son of a bitch. Sorry, guys, dude. What are you so doing, good, man? Watch, watching the NFL draft or something? What's going no, on? I should have been. I would literally was. I fucking fucked up and playing this and was like, homies were going down to downtown Detroit for the NFL draft. And I was like, oh, let me fucking tag along, I guess. They didn't end up picking me up. So now we're here. I'm I'm glad, actually, because I'm down in some what? fucking bullshit <laughs> down there in downtown Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to apologize if you see you hear some racket. My my roommates fucking ugga dug in with the the shit upstairs. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. We've done way worse. We had uh, Dan Severn uh, in the airport talking to us, and also we were hearing like airport announcements as he was trying to talk to us. Let me get this fucking goddamn light out of my face, dude. <laughs> That's the only thing I hate about my room that it, it fucking. It dicks me. I got this light. <laughs> it's all good, man. Scott, I guess you ran out to see the NFL draft. Yeah, I, I had to see who uh, the Jets were taking. I guess no. Yeah. <laughs> you had to. You gotta. You gotta tune in to see what the new, the new, the new blood's gonna be. Mm-hmm. What what we wasted our money on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I'm Mike. This is Scott. Welcome to the show. Um, I guess the only way to really start this question is, can you remember your first non-professional slap? Was it like, <laughs> a, was it a girlfriend? Was it a, a sassy mother or cousin that just didn't like what you were talking about? What was the wow, first that, thing you can recall? You know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I would, I would have to say, from memory, I don't remember I don't remember my first slap. That's probably a good thing because, you know, they're yeah, getting that... the flap right now. But <laughs> <laughs> all I can remember is I took that bitch with a grin on my face and said, you know, let me eat some more. <laughs> so let, let me ask you. I, I mean, usually I wait till I go into the origin story of someone. But I, I got to know right away, like, how did you 
Like, I remember seeing these videos, like, on Instagram and online of slap fighting overseas or, you know, these crazy Ru- Russians doing it. and Right, like, right. So you, like, you oh started God. exactly where I was. You started exactly where I started. So, so you, you seen, no, seen no, that, that shit is not like, true because I saw that and said I would never do that. You <laughs> saw that and was like, I'm going to make a career out of this. You didn't you didn't have a fire in your belly? Like, no, no, oh, no, no. Fuck, no. I'm going to fuck these dudes up. You <laughs> no. didn't have that? <laughs> not he not fired that, in man. belly, but he pooped his pants thinking about it. So yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what on earth made you say like, okay, I want to do this? Um, you know, it, I think it was a combination of many things. Um, just a, a, a big portion of my life, like sports in general, growing up in high school, middle school and stuff like that. Like, dude, if you put a fucking ball in my hand, I'm busting your ass. You know, even if I have no experience and you might be on the fucking varsity team, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking giving you a run for your money no matter what. That's what it's been for my life. No matter what kind of sport, what kind of activity you put in front of my hand, it, whether it be even labor, like labor, I fucking excel at labor work. I fucking crush labor work. You know what I'm saying? People love to have me on their crew because I'm that motherfucker that busts shit out and gets shit done. And it's fuck whatever everyone else is doing. I'm doing me. No, so never. it was probably it's weird when you, like, were just, team, <laughs> when you were on the bowling team, though. It's just the bowling team, bro. You were busting people's ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just bowling strikes. It's just consistency. <laughs> at that point. It's just, but, at that point. It's so if you if you really dig deep in this right. fucking slap game, uh, it's muscle memory. If you think about if you're throwing a fucking bowling ball in a consistent way to throw a 300 and make minor adjustments as you need to go to bowl that fucking 300 and hit the pocket. Every time you're, you're making very, very minuscule adjustments, but you're professional at it and consistent. So if you can't develop your slap to hit a strike and knock all the pins out every time, you're not you're not playing slap right. You know what I'm saying? Like we're trying to hit strikes. We're trying to knock out. We're trying to clear the pins. We're trying to strike out. And that's just one comparison. You know what I'm saying? I can put any sport you put in front of me and I can adapt it to slap in some way. And I will bust your ass at every other, one of those sports individually. But then you put slap in front of me then it's you know a total that that's my sport now that's where i come in that's what i took it took interest in in all of it over top you know what i'm saying like yeah. slap was like oh fuck that's me interesting now when when they started like when the, like dana's announcing it and they're starting to get things together i'm just curious were they looking for any qualifications as in like oh i've had I've done boxing or something like that where you've taken hits or were they just literally like, if you show up and you're willing to get slapped, we'll put you up here. So that, that would, you know, that's, that's a huge question because before power slap, power slap one, my first contest was the first time I've ever been hit in my face like that. Like, wow. In a fight. I've never been in a fight like that. It's never, I've never been a a confrontational person or anything like that, but in the mentality, I will end that confrontation. You know what I'm We won't have that because if you want to spark some shit, I'm going to end that shit right away Mm -hmm. because I fucking control the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like if my friends are here, my family's here and there's some kind of fucking situation, I... I put that out and squash that fire right away. You're not going to put my family in danger or anything that, so that, that kind of mentality comes into uh slap is an individual sport. You know, you're not going to put me out. I, I fully think like that's, that's my mentality from the time I get that call to where I sign that contract. Erica calls us and I sign that contract in this mental. You're not fucking with me. I'm, 
at that point, you're done. You know what I'm saying? Where do you think and that it, comes from? Where do you think that comes from? Was it something in your upbringing? Was it something in your family life? Was it something growing up? Or are you just, I don't know, just naturally have this this mentality to take these things? I, I want to say it's a natural mentality because there's been other sports and instances that like cooking, for example, that's one of my, oh, I love to fucking cook food and make other people. Uh, that's my passion. I love to make other people smile with the food that I cook. That's that's my oomph. And I want to do that for a living in some kind of way. If I can benefit myself by bringing people food, blah, blah, blah. That's my oomph right now. I want to do that. That's what drives me and makes me feel the most alive. I feel like I'm doing the most for the world. When I put my passion 100% into what I what I believe is what I do best at, you know what I'm saying? I'm benefiting the world at the best. I'm doing my 100% and you know maybe whatever else is on the side. So it could be slap on the side, I'm motivating people and shit like that, but what I really want to do is make food for people and like interesting. Mm. that that that's my drive that's what i want to do so give us our audience a little insight into the sport like i'm kind of curious when you are aiming for that slap and where exactly are you aiming for i would figure it would be on the jaw but like watching videos it looks like you're you all aim for like the upper cheek or somewhere that area and stuff right so we have there's pretty strict rules when it comes to power slap specifically you know what i'm saying there's other slap promotions that have their own rules us and power slap we have dialed it down made a professional sport out of it to where there's professional backing with the nevada state athletic commission and obviously other sports coming in or other states my bad we're gonna have other athletic state commissions come in and we're gonna have to up abide by their rules Mm -hmm. so there's going to be you know that kind of that kind of transition between we've had our first seven events here yet in vegas there hasn't been any teetering hasn't been anywhere else besides you know we had power slap six at the durango casino instead of the apex Mm -hmm. so now when we start traveling is there going to be a variance in the in the in the judging? You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There's that's that's one of the big things right now with the people is the judging, the fans. That's what they have the most quarrel with. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to drive people to want to watch the sport, though. Yeah. yeah, people want controversy. People want shit to talk about. They want to have opinions that fucking matter. And if they have conviction and this shit matters and they can put it out there and they feel it, then it's going to cause that stir. They're stirring the pot big time, you know, right now <laughs> that the, the rankings just came out and everyone is in quarrel. A lot of fans are making posts on Facebook. A lot of fans are making, I mean, you know, we're all posting stories on the rankings and they're having their own tidbits about it. It's great fucking media right now Mm. it's i can't explain it in any other words besides you know i'm thinking in the long run it's great media it's great now other than the competitions how are you training for this like how does one get better at slapping it when we don't see like are you in the gym hitting a heavy bag are you are you lifting like what what makes what is the best training for slapping And I'm guessing the jury's actually still out because it's so new. Like, what is the best training? So, I mean, yeah, if you want to, if you want to dig into it, there's been, you know, a couple of these fighters, uh, Dwayne Crespo, he's been taking people under his wing, trying to coach them. Uh, Besides that, you're basically on your own if you don't have a coach 
or a physical trainer or somebody to coach you in striking or anything like that. You're doing this on your own. This is, you know, blind eye. So my, my, me, myself, uh, my trainer I've known since high school, I'm 33. We graduated together. So we've been fucking around for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's someone I, I can trust with our both life experience and with this slap, like we're both coming into it. It's only two years old, you know, roughly we came in at the same time. We both have the same interest. It's, it's unreal the way that if you, if you want to add everything up, the way that me and my coach have things locked down is like a Sean O'Malley and Tim Welch kind of, like they've been together for that long and yep. they are yeah. champions. They are running the game right now when it comes to being powerful in social media and stuff because they're able to like joke around at the fact that people can't fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Like Sean's able to call people out and make fun of people on on reels and whatnot because he knows where he's at. Mm. He's in control of the game right now. And that's where I want to be is in control of power slap because I, I feel like I've put the energy and time in and focus. I've quit my job. Like I haven't, I haven't worked in over a year. You know what I'm saying? Like I've, I've solely focused on slap for that reason to where I feel like I have the I'm not really like the the face kind of guy. Like I, I'm not a pretty guy. I'm not a fucking whatever. Well, I'm not a social media guy. But I'm in the, the right area. Face, though you're the baby face, right? Yeah. I'm in the right area to like I have the gimmick and the fucking know how to put the shit together and make a fucking a big deal out of it. I feel like I am in the position to blow this shit up in the right city, in the right state of my life. There's just shit adding up in the in the universe. You know what I'm saying? It's lining up to where it's going to blow up eventually. And I just have to stick it out and fucking really focus in on my, my areas and yeah. get it done. Yeah, I can totally see it. And you know, especially with the backing and you know, I'll have curiosity it, it, when you're at these events, is Dana at all the events? Is he keeping track of everything? Do you talk to well, him often? Yeah. I mean, so we don't get to, obviously with these events going on the same weekends as UFC 300 shit like that going on, we don't get to see Dana unless we, catch them in bypassing after the event, whatever, you know, the red rocks session happens right after. And he usually does a little bit of gambling with the social media guys afterwards. So I guess from the rumors, he only came out to see that fight, Chris Thomas versus Anthony Babyface Blackburn. And then after that had, press conferences for 300 to go to. So he came out for my fight only and then left. That's, that's what I'm under the assumption of. And I thought, you know, made a pretty good lasting impression on him. <laughs> yeah. That was a short notice fight too. Wasn't it for you? 25 days. Wow. But like, what do you usually get like a few months to get ready for them or what exactly I, happened? Somebody get injured? No, it's so on average, you know, we get we get a couple months, usually six to eight weeks minimum notice. Uh, Jules Scott turned it down because he was still like I was suspended after my Cole Young fight because of a orbital fracture. I needed to take they gave me uh, 90 days. So I took my. 150 days and got cleared early had my fight with andrew fields but like jewel he had the same kind of fracture and worry that the commission was worried about mm. so he took his time he's taking his time he he doesn't need to you know take the the risk i guess is where his mind his mind is at. i don't need the risk is where he's yeah. at 
So now, so now where that puts him, they just put him at number one, and I just beat number one in knockout fashion. So what leaves? Where where, where are they putting the matches? We don't know, and I love it because everyone is so emotional because they think otherwise. Oh, you should be number one. I love it. I love that. It, it's awesome. Everyone's messaging me. You should be number one. What's going on? Blah 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 blah. Perfect, baby. I love that you guys think that because I think that I'll just take my time getting there. Don't worry, baby. I'll be there. Get the you know what I'm well. saying? Yeah. So yeah. now, like, you know, you can consider this sport maybe one of the most dangerous sports. Like, like, no, 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 no. You don't think so? No, 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 no. Because they why, why not? All right. So, hear me out now. We've done studies. There's been very, very, very intricate studies on this now, okay. to where they've had magazine people come out. And uh, witness these events and stuff like that. And if you do the data, if you include the data, so in now we'll, we'll this is after Power Slap Seven. So there was there's probably been 170 matches. Mm-hmm. We've had uh, three hospitalizations, including one of the time was me. Right for the for the orbital. Yeah. So that's three time, I think three hospitalizations after the event in total after okay. probably 170 to 200 matches. Gotcha. And that's just, that's just precautionary hospitalization. It's not like they fucking are dying and they need to go there. They're going there in case anything's yeah. wrong. They're being yeah. checked. Yeah, that's but, but, precautionary hospitalization. It's not they need to go to the hospital. It's they need to get checked. Right. That's what that's what's happening. And that's the thing that people might not realize with power slap is we are the same with the UFC medically. They check us drastically before we even get up on that stage or even invited on that stage. I, I there guess- is. I guess there what is, I mean as far as it being dangerous is medical like, backgrounds. I guess, I guess what I mean as far as it being dangerous is like you're not you're not able to defend yourself really, right? Like it I just like you said so you are taking pretty yeah, I mean I've seen the way you hit, I've seen the way yeah. that other people hit. Like it's a it's a full strike. It's a yeah. it's a bump, it's a knock you out strike. Right. You know. So I mean, if you, unless you put sensors on someone's head, right, and then like compare it to, you'd have to put sensors on a football player's head, a basketball player's chest during a charge or some right. shit like that to compare it. There is more injuries as far as like hospitalization and medically with normal contact sports in a lower setting. If you're in middle school, high school football, you're taking more licks per practice than we ever do in a year. That makes sense. Yeah. If you're a lineman. Yeah. That's, you you know, it's four snaps. We take three licks per fight. Maybe at maximum five. That's a championship fight. And if you're taking five championship level strikes, I mean, you're meant to be there, right? And there's, there's not many, there's not many people in other sports that are going to be able to take the same strike, but they can get injured in other ways easier. Right. Right. You know, you can roll an ankle in basketball. You can, you know, jam a finger in basketball, football as a receiver and whatever. You know, there's 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 simple injuries that you don't take into account um, that have a factor. And we only have 
I guess it's super limited. You know, we got that one time to come up there and show out. We got that one strike, maximum three for a regular fight, maximum five. So you got that one time to put everything together that you've been training for for months before this happened and everything in your mind emotionally, like, I hate this guy. I'm going to knock him the fuck out. He's been talking shit on social media. You know, you got this one strike and you got to worry about your feet and you got to worry about hitting the right place. You got these lights and cameras on you beforehand. You're interviewing with Michael Bisping, a UFC fucking legend. Mm. Dan Helly, great announcer. Justin Bernard, great fucking announcer for Power Slap. So it's like everything adds up in the end for it to be a monumental life moment. And if you're not ready for this, it shows. If you're not mentally there in the moment and you don't take everything in, take everything for granted with a grain of salt and really match everything up and mold it together. And if you're not in that fucking mash, dude, it's game over for you. This is a sport where it's, if you don't have that mentality of like get fucked, you're getting fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's kill or be killed in this sport. It's to a point though, where it's so technical now that it's, you have to get fucked on a technical level. Like it's a, when I knocked out Chris, he's KO Chris. And I told Michael Bisbing and I told Dan Helly the day before that I'm going to change his fucking nickname. It's KO'd Chris now. And I fucking did that shit, dude. Mm. And I fucking meant it with my being and my training and everything that led up to that moment. I said I was going to change his fucking name. And I did it, dude. And it blew my mind. I blew my own mind. It was insane. I still am like still trying to grasp that fucking glory and, you know, the normal shit that comes with that stardom. Like I, I did something a little bit cool. People are loving it. Sure. Absolutely. But you have, to, you have to take it with a grain of salt. You know, you have to be humble and still maintain the same road you're on. Cause I'm on this road of greatness, bro. Like I'm going, I, there was nothing that was going to change me from that. I wanted Chris from the get go. I wanted to, I said it in a different interview the day before on the Marcus Deegan podcast. I want to test myself against the best and knock my, knock out the best. And I did it. It was fucking wild, dude. I don't know if you guys- I mean, you guys probably fucking manifested shit in your lifetimes. and um, But I'm telling you, I've done it a few times in my life now, and it's like starting to boulder up and get bigger and bigger. I'm starting to get fucking scared, but then worried and ready for more, you know? Mm. That's, a, that's a big thing with looking for greatness. Um, out of curiosity, like after you go through an event and know how long does it take before your face will be like calm down and you feel normal talk normal does it does it take out like a day or does it do you literally uh, get like rest for a week or something like that it depends like when uh when i had my second fight against cole young he uh, fractured my orbital. So when I came out of that fight, my shit was real swelled up. I looked like a fucking crazy, crazy person. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Swelled the shit. Looked like an ogre. It hasn't happened since then. Thankfully, I haven't been fucking screwed up like that. And everything usually calms down within a week. You get a little swelling on the cheek and the jaw and whatnot. If you get hit the right way and it's not a foul, you should be fine. If you're getting fouled in this sport, you're getting fucked up. Like, it's going to hurt. If you get fouled and someone's really trying to knock you out, that's the part where the commission's trying to keep you safe. When they implement these rules to where you're not supposed to lead with your palm, like, you know, if I Mm -hmm. fucking... 
if I come with you at that with that bone, mm-hmm. you know, I'm yeah, swinging them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when they implement, when you're explaining the rules, they want you to hit flat, flat as you can. You know, most people are very conscious of it. You can only do so much when you're swinging for the fences, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Like now, you're trying ask- to knock, you're trying to knock the other guy out. Let me ask you: When you decided to get into this sport, what was the reaction from like people around you, your family, friends? Like, did they think you were insane, or like, did you really have to sell them on it? Like, okay, I'm going to go slap people for a living. Well, listen to this because that's even crazier. I signed up thinking, you know, I'm scrolling on Facebook. I was hungover one Saturday, dude. <laughs> hungover. <laughs> Feeling like dog shit, bro. Just in the bed. Scrolling on Facebook. And this this fucking ad came up in the scroll, right? Calling me out. You think you got what it takes? Blah, blah, blah. Sign up here. And it was a fucking sign up now button. You know, you click it and it brought you to the page to sign your information away. I fucking did it, dude. And I was like, there's no way. Like, I, yeah, I clicked sign up and took a, took a screenshot and was like, hey, I feel badass for signing up for this. You know, I posted it on social media <laughs> saying, y'all, who else is signing up for power? I'm a badass motherfucker, you know, mm-hmm. not thinking that they would call me. And then they call you and you're like, what? <laughs> they they want to know my, what's your weight? What's your height? What's your arm span? What's your address? You know, that they fucking came with the nuts. And I was like, shit, this is real now. And it happened so fast. You know, before Power Slap won, it was probably a month and a half that I had from when I got the, hey, do you want to come out and do this for real to where it was fight day? You know, 45 days into something new that I've never been a part of before. We fucking trusted people to fly us out to Vegas, put us up in hotels and everything off a whim. It was just an email, you know, just an email, just a, you know, I had the UFC and stuff under it and the address and whatnot, but you're just in this state of, there's no way, you know, (laughs) there's no, there's no fucking way. There's no way. So at that point, it's like, all right, I'm fucking all in at this point. Like I'm yeah. in it. I'm in it to win it now. Like fuck you guys. You you pick the right one. That's where I'm at. You pick the right one today. That's where I'm at. Well, I was checking out your Instagram and all the things I could have figured of looking at with all the power slapping. And I'll tell people about this uh, kendama. Because you, yeah. you look at you're super into it and all. Tell me yeah, all yeah, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, this thing right here. Mm-hmm. If you, uh, if you had the time that I had with it, you would understand. It is not only a passion, but it becomes a life tool. And it becomes a growing aspect of your life to where if you incorporate it every day, and it doesn't have to be crazy, but ten min- five minutes a day of, I'm going to fuck around and pick this up and get a little bit better at it every single day, right? Mm-hmm. A little bit better. doesn't need to be a whole lot, but a little bit better. Then it, it gives you this sense of drive to where... Oh, I kind of look forward to this every day. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to pick up my kendama and see if I got, see if I can get that next trick, that next challenge that I set for myself. Or when it comes into the nitty gritty, you get into the Facebook kendama community and the Instagram shit. And it's really about, you know, progression. It's about no matter what your age is, no matter who you are, no matter what background you come from everyone can start at the same point and have the same experience but have that s- different progression level it doesn't matter what age who you are whatever everyone starts at the same brick 
but you can also compare yourselves to everyone else because you know you're posting videos on the community everyone hypes each other up you know good job dude you oh you only been playing a month or two you're crushing it for two months you know i didn't do that good when i was two months in and this is from a player that's been playing for years and years and years and is very advanced it's that very advanced person giving you the tidbits of information that are encouraging that you accept and you're oh it drives you every single day of your life to be a part of this community that's driving to get better it's everybody driving to get better it's everyone wants to push everyone else in the same sense like it's just a get better drive that's what the kendama community is about and i want to push that into all aspects of my life i've always just incorporated it in my life i carry it around me everywhere i go it's around my neck if anyone wants to if i'm yeah, getting a shot at the bar very, like very a, unique very interesting like i'm telling you when i get a when i get a beer and a shot at the bar and the bartender's like what the hell's around your neck and i tell him oh try this shit and they're like oh i've seen it before blah 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 yeah you've seen it but you haven't played it mm. and I, I get them on it and then i tell them everything that i've done show them videos the competitions all my friends world renowned you know what i'm saying like we're from a small detroit town but we're world renowned for kendama like we we're big in the community there's people that from japan where kendama is born that know us there's people in the fucking netherlands canada you know and then you can go state by state state by state i can name people that i know Very and it's just a, it's just a great community that I think would really benefit everyone in life. Like that's what, that's what the Kendama community is. That's a toy and a mindset and a principle that could benefit anyone. It doesn't have to be a specific, you know, you don't have to be a toy player or nothing. It's anybody. That's what the whole, that's what I love about it. I love that aspect of imp- improve get better grind for something greater and then you have the community around you to enforce it so you you know you're you're such an interesting guy on 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 so many levels um so first off thank you for for coming on spending some time with us if if people want to check you out like whether it's <laughs> slap fighting fans or there's people who hear this interview and like this guy's just <laughs> unique or it's Kendama fans. Where should they yeah. go to find all things babyface? Uh babyface power slap on Instagram is my my main thing right now. Anthony Blackburn on Facebook. Uh other than that, I, I wanna say my my Twitter is linked or whatever my threads and Instagram is linked. Sure. Mm. I'm not a technical guy. I'm just fucking trying to get into this shit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm learning still and I'm going to I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to really give it a go and try and promote myself on here and get some fans cuz I know I have the type of personality that people can relate to and people will gravitate gravitate towards. It's it's not like a I'm trying to do one thing. I'm not trying to just be a power slap champion. I'm trying to instill a fucking mindset into people. You know what I'm saying? Like in the long run, that's what I'm trying to portray is a, as a champion mindset. Like I always wanted to grind to be the best. I've always worked to progress and get better no matter what I do. So in in the long run that's all i'm trying to portray is progression do better no matter where you're at in life try to strive not only for you but for everyone around you to just be able to impact everyone and be a positive figure and umbrella yourself positively and fucking take care of people that's why that's what that's what i want to do i want to take care of people that's awesome Final question. Did you get that final paycheck from that pizzeria you brought up in your post-match interview? No, I haven't. 
And you know what? I'll I'll cut my losses. And I'm not trying to fucking. He's still every day posting ads about pizza in his other businesses and shit. He's doing fundraisers. He's doing his own thing, dude. And I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be fucking <laughs> hounding him for a little two three hundred dollar check. Yeah, it's just, but you know oh. the principles there. The principles there. So I believe karma will get that guy. <laughs> I feel that karma Anthony, will get that guy. Anthony, thank you so much for your time. We wish you well. We hope you get that title shot. And when you get that title, no, we'd love to have you back on the cast. Thank you, brothers. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, baby face, everyone. Baby face. Um, Mike, if we were in a slap fight, okay, say we, we you know, we need some pr- promotional material. Okay. I'm curious. I, I'm guessing you would always want to go first. That we, we should have asked him that. Like, as far as, like, is the goal to always go first? Or do you think, like, the goal would be, like, I'm going to take whatever you can give me as, like, a mental thing? But I don't know. To me, like, going first has to be a big advantage. I have seen some power slaps where, like, they do the coin toss and one of them. Some of them do prefer taking the slap first, and all. I guess they kind of figure. I mean, they've done this competition for a little bit, so they have some kind of resilience. So I can only assume it's like, let me feel what you got first off, and then worry about my stuff. One of those, I could take your first punch. You're not Tyson, and yeah, I'll I could, bounce back from. This. I could, I could see the intimidation factor of that, like taking their first, you know, best shot. However. I feel like it's got to wear on you, right? Like, so if I get the first shot, that also means I'm getting the second shot first. You know, I'm, I'm getting two shots be- mm-hmm. before you get one, like almost like a, a build up effect where the second one has to be, you know, I, I have weakened you or, I, you know, I smashed your face already a little bit. I rattled your your head i can't imagine going second like i feel like going second has to be i would love to see like statistically in power slap how who wins first or second but um i feel like i don't know that's such like a something that would happen to like buffalo bills fans like ah remember when we decided to take take the slap in the afc championship that year you know like you got knocked straight out I mean, maybe you could throw them off the game and all like blow them kisses or do funny faces <laughs> as they're like prepping for that slap, and I'll just try to get in their head or something where they get a little off on that first slap, and you you're ready to go. Yeah, uh, but I I still think <clears throat> ten out of ten times I'm gonna take the first slap on you. Like, there's no way yeah. I'm gonna let uh, you know. And, and there's the obvious I can get knocked out on the first. The first one. I'm not gonna lose the fight without getting one slap in. You know, it's, uh, it's, I mean that'd be a terrible career right there. I know it's like you you're calling up your parents, Mom, Dad, I'm a professional slapper. I this has been my dream all my life, and I know I can do this. That's why if I win the coin toss, I'm gonna be on the defense to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, what if there's a guy that's, like, 0-32, but he's just known for always deferring and getting knocked out, you know? like <laughs> <laughs> He might be the most popular power slapper of all time. <laughs> it's the glass Joe of power slap right there. It's the Brooklyn brawler of uh, <laughs> power slap. Yeah, uh, yeah very interesting. I, I'm curious where that sport goes and, and, and the longevity of it. I, I like that, like, they're taking it seriously, but I, I've also heard that um, I, I think it said three or four of the top ten, like um, YouTube shorts or TikTok shorts or something like that, are from Power Slap, like trending all like in all of uh, social media. It's interesting. I guess it it also caters itself to being quick clips. You know, like one quick giant slap is something people are going to watch. You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, June twenty eighth, it's live and free on Rumble. Power Slap Eight, check it out and see what you think. Now, if you had to uh, enter a contest against one of our guests, who do you think you have a clear chance of winning against? Paul Templer. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, for those of you listening, Paul Templer had his arm eaten off by a hippopotamus. Uh, no, did- no, I signed on for a left hand slap competition, okay? <laughs> Oh, we love you, Paul. We love you. Uh, okay. Um, Mike, I, um, the other day I was, um, I went, I went to get a new, uh, tattoo. Um, and got a Ooh. little tattoo on my arm for my daughter. Um, and I went back to my tattoo artist that did, I just have, I have one, two, three, I have four on my arm, um, and three of them were done by my artist. She stopped doing it for a little while, um, so I the, the only one I have is from a a, di- a different artist. What um, did you do to her? Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, don't worry, it's not did tattooed you- on me. There's no evidence, you know. Um, <laughs> did you power slap your artists again, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> Ow, that hurts, Mac. <laughs> um, do better art, Whack. Now. I, I love I love the girl's art. Um, I've always found her to have a little bit of flair for the dramatic in conversation. Um, and and I was talking to her now. Now she is. Um, when I met her, she was in a relationship with a female. The second okay. tattoo I got, she was getting married to a man. And the third tattoo I got from her just recently, um, she's getting divorced from the man. Ooh. Okay. So it's pretty interesting. Now, and and it's also interesting because I think I got my first one from her almost 10 years ago. So I've kind of, you know, every time I come in and get one, I kind of, it's like checking in, you know, you have conversations. It's like being at the... Dent- no, not really the dentist. You don't talk much, but like, I don't know. Anywhere you're getting like a. <laughs> uh, 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 Burr, uh, I'm drilling your tooth. You really have to shut up right yeah. now. <laughs> Maybe that's why I hate the dentist so much. They don't They don't let me talk. <laughs> they don't have conversations in the dentist's office anymore. They shove cotton in there and they just go to it. Yeah. So, um, so we're talking and, you know, we're going through. Uh, you know, she said, oh, you know, I'm getting divorced. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. We'd start talking about our stories, right? I start telling her about my past a little bit and and uh, the interesting uh, developments that have happened in my in my ex's uh, whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, so I start talking to her and she's like, well, you know, I'm like completely um, – I think after this relationship, I don't know if I can go back to men again. Like you guys are crazy. I'm like, oh, totally get that, you know? Because she's yeah. like, she's like, you know, I've always been like queer my whole life. I, you know, I I like both sexes. I'm like, that's cool. I said, I get it. I said, if I like dudes after my relationship, I might have, you know, me and Mike might have been married at this point. So, Never know. Um, I mean, he is heaven's first pick, so I gotta. I gotta exactly. get, get on his coattails a little bit. Marry up, okay? Yeah. But I, I, I was interested to hear your take on this because she's like, okay, so I, I I'm still going through the divorce. Um, it's not official yet, you know. Blah blah blah. I'm just trying to get out there and start dating. I said that's awesome. I said you you totally should. I said, you know, get out there, even if you just go out for dinner or like get out of the house and put yourself in different you know spots that went on she's like well I-, I met this girl and she's totally awesome and i'm like that's great like i i, I think that's great and she's like yeah you know like um it- there's a couple things that are interesting about her like a r- couple red flags i'm like yeah like oh. what you know so I'm-, I'm just curious like she rattled off a couple red flags here. I want to get, get your take on this. As a person who's like not even divorced yet, okay. Um, if, Time will tell. If, if, if you, well, we we know that's coming, Mike. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, we. Um, I want I want to hear what you what you think. If this is a smart idea on her part, okay. 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 So the first one, she said, okay. Well, this woman, um, this is her. Her first lesbian experience. Um, she's never been with a woman before. Um, and the girl I'm date, the girl I've met, um, she's really awesome. But this is her first um, lesbian experience. Now, the, the, 
do you, what, what's your what's your thoughts on that? I'm all for Les fans. Have you seen my browsing history? You know, I'm a big supporter. Oh, we can't go back to the fluid talk, man. We can't go uh, back. To the oh, okay. I forgot. We did that in the first half. Sorry. Sorry. Continue. Continue. Okay. So I immediately like a minor red flag. Okay. Like, okay. Like it's your first lesbian experience. Like, um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of into her and whatnot uh that's okay well that's cool like no no problem okay so it just started there i'm like okay and she's like yeah i really like the girl she's totally awesome um but she's also um she has a child um who's like 16 okay and she's not completely divorced from her husband Mm. okay so that was red flag number two yeah. Okay. I said, all right. You know, like I, I guess it's okay. Like the the child's older. Um, I guess she might understand this about, or she has the uh, capacity to understand that this about her mother that maybe she's attracted to women. Yeah. Uh, but then the first red flag thinking to me is saying, okay, like is this a complete like kind of like rebound thing or complete like i'm getting divorced uh i'm just gonna do something kind of crazy and crazy jump, jump head you know head first into it okay yeah and, and when it's like well it's not official the divorce yet that's always kind of like a red flag it's like no you you either divorce or yeah. you're single you know it's mm-hmm. you, you get out of the contract okay so I'm like, okay. I said, well, like, so my advice just kept being like, just have fun with it. Like, um, you know, don't jump into anything head first. If she, if you really like her, like, go on another date with her. Just take it like one step at a time. I said, you don't want to jump into anything either. Like, you want to get yourself together, and yeah. Um, but like, if you're having fun, there's no, no, you know, no harm in it. Then she said, um. She's also um, bipolar. She's also mm-hmm. bipolar and extremely like manic and um, goes into, you know, crazy moods sometimes and whatnot. And she was like, well, I, um, I've been doing some research on how to deal with bipolar people and um, how to understand them and give them space in this. I said, okay, so right away we got... We got a kid, 16 years old, first mm-hmm. lesbian relationship, not officially divorced, and mm-hmm. she's bipolar. Okay. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> so now I'm kind of like, well, you know, just, feel, just I, I, then I started yeah. to throw out the, just be careful a little bit, you know, just, yeah. just, uh, you know, if it's not working, don't be afraid to just, you know, back off. Yeah. This is still doable, but there are like hurdles on the track right now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, then she throws another one in. She goes, yeah, she basically, like, wants me to move in. I said, whoa, like, I, I probably wouldn't do that. Um, she's like, uh, yeah, but you don't know. She's like, lesbians are, like, notorious for, like, attaching really quickly and whatnot. And I'm like, she she got me like my own toothbrush there and stuff like that. And she's like all about it. Like just move in with me. I said, I think she's just rebounding like really she really hard. But like again, be careful. Like you're not even out of your house <laughs> and, and, and whatnot yet. Okay. Yeah. Like when I go to buy toothpaste and I see a woman buying a toothbrush, I say, don't go too fast, okay? <laughs> you That's also, what I tell every single woman. In the, yeah, ironically, the you also tell them to move in with you. So it's... A, I, it's I mean, I, you know, I got to hedge my bets here, Scott, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm married now, but, you know, I had to play the field. No. Do you want to... So there was one more red flag um, that kind of blew my mind a little bit at the end, and it, it, and it wasn't like the moving in one was like I was like wow okay like please don't do this <laughs> in the back yeah of my that's head. super like, fast I'm like okay please don't do this like you're just gonna be soon you're gonna be like tattooing on the streets here because this <laughs> does not sound like it's going well um would you like to guess what maybe the other red flag could be fifth red flag uh is it anything financial it is not no. it's not financial uh 
Is it something kinky or sexual wise? No. No. Um, okay. So the fifth red flag, she says to me, oh, and she's also like got this huge following on social media where she like reveals everything. And I went down a wormhole and watched all these videos of her like just destroying her exes and telling all and like being really open about ex relationships and and just burning them down. She's like, Oh, I should be careful. I'm like, you realize where this is probably going. You might just be content for this girl. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is what Travis Kelsey had to balance with Taylor Swift right here. Mm -hmm. It's like, (laughs) if I break up with you, am I going to be trending on TikTok next to uh, the person we talked about earlier. Huh? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, the bipolar woman who's not yet divorced, who wants you to move in and who destroys her exes and you're not completely moved out um, and you're going to move in in like a week and a half um, and be kicked out like on uh, onto mm-hmm. the streets. Literally, I'm like, you don't see... She's like, but yeah, she's sexy as hell. I'm like, most of these crazy ones are like, mo- yeah, <laughs> like uh, um, it's a, it a really interesting conversation while get, uh, getting a, a tattoo. I was only like a 45 minute tattoo. I'm like, you really revealed like everything to me in this little 45 minute session. Uh, thank God you didn't get like a full back tattoo and all because then you would have been going to Larry's. It's like, I, I can't do this anymore. I got to go to a new artist. But it, it is funny because like, you know, I've been in terrible relationships and I, I, <laughs> You know, I definitely have some red flags that I didn't see that I should have seen, um, which maybe we could chat about next week. I'm sure you might, you may have had some similar experiences that once you, but when you're in it, you kind of can't see through the, the through can't the see trees. the forest through the trees. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. So, but it was really interesting. I'm like, wow, this does not sound like a great setup for a positive relationship. Yeah, just realize if you get somehow you get another baby and you got to get another tattoo, she'll probably be like, "Yeah, I'm a widow." Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the, the she she was she was on TikTok and it's just woo, 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 just <laughs> thing one thing went to another, but uh, got a ton of views. Congratulations, got a free toothbrush out of it. Yeah, hey Mike, like look, I'm getting a ton of views. Let's let's keep tagging our podcast in the comments. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like if she gets rid of you can you ask her to use a hashtag verbal shenanigans yeah. just for the fun of it you know <laughs> i'll ride that wave i don't care <sighs> oh, but yeah anyway yeah we'll, we'll discuss that more next next week uh mike i know this was a big weekend for you scott it was it was absolutely huge i sent you massive the screenshots i mean i when the season started i told you how amazing this season would be but the UFL the championship, it was just a solid game. Oh, you're, not, you're not talking Stallion. about the baseball season or the it, Euro Cup or but, or what are those? NASCAR or F1, nothing? Uh, uh, Scott, the UFL championship happened. Birmingham went three for three in championships. They won the first two USFL titles, and they turn around and they take over the UFL. It was a phenomenal season. I can't believe you don't. I mean, you keep track of the hot to a girl, but not the UFL. One, I thought this was the first UFL season. Um, so technically, it is, but it oh. came from USFL and XFL. So the oh. Birmingham Stallions <laughs> were part of the USFL. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Mike, you're watching this weekly uh, during the during the off season or do you prefer this over the NFL? Well, you I mean, might, I, you might judging by your team um, prefer this over the NFL. Uh, there's times you know, <laughs> we, we might be climbing the mountain this year. Who knows? But uh, oh my God. most You've of been, the times it just ends and I go uh, back to the UFL. We've been doing this for 10 years. You've been climbing the mountain for 10 years. We yeah, might be we climbing climb the, mountain. the mountain. We fall off again <laughs> and we try again. I don't know what to tell you. Listen, at least you know, like, I'm a Giants fan. I'm always like, we're probably not going to be that good this year. And then, like, the one or two years, it's like, oh, that was fun. Um, but yeah. we're probably not going to be good. You, I mean, you have predicted the, the the Washington football team or whatever the hell their name is now to win the 
win the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, I was a little off on that. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> I think they won six <laughs> games that year or something like that. Uh, yeah. You know, you always give us a positive outlook, like, well, if we get this guy together, we're going to be really good. And it, it just keeps being the same, Mike. Uh, wow. it just keeps keeps being the same. Yeah, it's hurtful, Scott. But I, I, I just can't believe you, Dan, like, bunker down and just find yourself a UFL team and watch this season. I'm a no, as, a, as a big UFL guy, who's the team you are you are behind? Like, you, you know, who's your squad? Well, I mean, like I said, the Birmingham Stallions—they're just—they're no. just elite right now. I mean, I didn't—I didn't know if you I, were telling me that the Stallions were good or that you were, you know, a big Stallion supporter. Well, I mean, Scott, I know a ton about the whole history of the USFL, the XFL, the UFL. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Do you know about these spring football leagues? I mean, obviously. Um... I'm just playing dumb here on the podcast. Clearly, I know all about yeah. it. I mean, we. Yeah, I mean, that's of- what you got the tattoo of. You, you got the. <laughs> it's like, listen, they won in their championship, Birmingham. Yeah. I need the 2024 tattooed on my arm. I was just going to say the exact same thing to you, <laughs> which is hilarious. But you know, we Facetime during the games. We uh, mm-hmm. we usually arrange flights down to Georgia and Jersey to watch the games together. So yeah, um, I mean, we do the UFL podcast on the side, and we haven't released it yet, but yeah. it's coming, ladies. Yeah, and yeah, it's it, just it, a matter of time. It, yeah, it's called Wild Stallions. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, but you know, I know the UFL. All right. I mean, let's, let's start off with a straight one. True or false, the UFL is made up of four USFL teams and four XFL teams. I mean, my gut says true because I know it is a combo, but I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to go with true. Scott, I'm, uh, it's false, Scott. The USFL and the XFL both had a team in Houston, and the league decided to use the XFL branding of the Houston Roughnecks over the Houston Gamblers. So the USFL division has one XFL team in it. That's just stupid. No, it's, Scott, you, you don't understand the branding of the UFL. I mean, that's, I mean, that's what you got to consider. You know, we're supposed to be an entertainment show, so I, I punted on that one just to make it seem like oh. I, didn't, I didn't really know what was going gotcha. on. But, gotcha. you know, I got this. All right. Which of these teams were not a team that folded in the merger to the UFL? Not. Is it the Seattle Sea Dragons, the Pittsburgh Maulers, the San Diego Fleet, or the Orlando Guardians? First off, were, were these all real teams at one point? <laughs> they were all real teams, correct. I did not go, make up a name. <laughs> I'm going to go with A because it sounded kind of familiar. Seattle Sea Drink. No, Scott, they were in the XFL and they folded. Come on. Uh, All those Sea Dragon fans gone in the Seattle yeah. market, too. It's big yeah, sports. They market. had uh, Josh Gordon for a while, the Sea Dragons. It, uh, he was in between his like 12th drug uh, suspension in the NFL. No, Scott, the San Diego Fleet were a team in the AAF, the, the league before the XFL and the USFL. So they weren't part of the group that folded it. You know what? Trump came out the other day and was like, we should have a migrant fighting league. Um, I I think he was on to something, but wrong sport. It should just be like all the guys who were arrested or did something terrible, they should all go into one league. And all the charges of the team who wins the whole thing should be dropped. Mm. You know, like all these pending cases – uh, murders, rapes, tortures, DUI, whatever, uh, drug charges. You win that cup, you are free. I think the competition level would go up. Huh. I mean, we, the purge seemed to work, so I'm just waiting for that right there. Uh, Scott, well, all right, Scott, stop playing around. You, we know you know stuff, so get this where I one get back right. on track. Yeah. yeah, all right. Which of the following is true about home games? For the St. Louis Battlehawks, Scott. <laughs> uh, a, their average attendance was more than all of the teams in the USFL division combined. B, they are the only team to play in an empty steam due to a massive accident off of I-270. <laughs> C, 
NXT. <laughs> they had to play their first four games on the road to not interfere with the NSWL St. Louis Dynasty soccer schedule. Or D, they are the only team to play a game in front of 65,000 people. Hmm. I feel like A and D kind of go together and B and C kind of go together, like similar vibe. Hmm. Um, I want to say they're the only team to play in an empty stadium because of an accident. That's uh, no, there's been plenty of teams that played in front of an empty stadium, but no, <laughs> not for an accident on I-270. Scott, uh, they're one of the more successful teams, St. Hmm. Louis. They actually have a better average attendance, about 34,000 more than the four teams in the USFL division combined, which combines to about 31,000 for four teams. Wow, that's like more than Washington gets. Yeah, I mean, Washington, I mean, no, Scott. The, <laughs> the opposing team's fans come into our stadium and averages out the stadium. Come on now. Uh, uh, they Scott. come to view the sewage pipes and they'll drain it yeah. on them. Yeah. They meet their favorite player by falling over a broken rail exactly. just to tackle him. So exactly. it's a beautiful you know, place. It's a, it's a beautiful place. All right, Scott. UFL does not kick extra points. They score an extra one, two, or three points by completing conversion. Oh, what I do yard that, line, of course. Uh, well, what yard lines do they start to play from these points? Is it A, one, three, and five? Is it B, two, four, and eight? Is it C, two, five, and ten? Or is it D, three, six, and nine? I'm going to go with C here. Uh, I'm going to go with C. So you're holding back, Scott. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, see, two, I, I five know. and ten. You Come can't on. get three points inside of ten yards. Everybody knows that. Yeah, like absolutely, gotta, yeah. That's the fun bit. I mean, I'm, well, well, Scott, we just talked about the dynasty that is the Birmingham Stallions. They go Stallions, yep. Stallions, they, Stallions. We gallop, we run. Stallions, mm, Stallions. Mm, we do the run and gun. Stallions, uh, Stallions. Uh, Our team is so fun. Mm, go. Stallion! Exactly, exactly. They have won both USFL titles, and they're this year's UFL champion. Duh. Now, name the only other team that has more than one win in the playoffs in the current rendition, the USFL, XFL, and UFL playoffs. <laughs> Is it A, the Michigan Panthers? Is it B, the San Antonio Brahmas? Is it C, the Philadelphia Stars? Or is it D, the Arlington Renegades? I mean, everyone knows it's D, the Arlington Renegades. I mean, that's a pretty obvious answer. I mean, if you follow the sport, if you call yourself a real fan, you know it's the Arlington Renegades. Which you are, Scott, because that's absolutely correct. Oh my God. They yeah. are the team that won the XFL title last year, so that's the only way they could have won two games. Yeah, you know, because they have that chant. Renegades, renegades, here we go. Renegades, renegades, here our flow. Renegades, renegades, to and fro. Renegades, renegades, go, go, go. Like, I mean, I, I know it pretty well, so. I mean, I mean, that's what... You tried to get the whole thing on your arm as a sleeve, and she's like, I don't have time for this right now. I have to talk about my girlfriend. So. She's like, I got one more red flag. <laughs> she loves the USFL. No, no. <laughs> and you're like, no, that's not. All right, you're catching up. You're two out of five right now. Let's, let's keep it going, Scott. Uh, Jake Bates did what during a game for the Michigan Panthers? Did he, A, throw a touchdown to himself? Is it B, he punched a coach on the sidelines and left the field? Is it C, he kicked a 64-yard field goal? Or D, did he score a 97-yard rushing touchdown? I mean, everyone knows that Jake Bates is the one of the dominant players in, in this league. Um, of course. He's pretty much like the Mahomes of, of the USFL. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's been doing it for a long time now. And everyone knows he kicked that field goal. So I'm going to go with C. Scott, this is absolutely beautiful. He kicked a 64-yarder. In fact, he got signed by the Detroit Lions just for his – he kicked two over 60 yards in the XF – or the UFL. So. I mean, I told you guys, it's not entertaining if I get all the questions right. So I have no. to, like, do the old bait and switch to make it entertaining for listeners. Scott, you're, you're kind of like the Edmonton Oilers. You were down 0-3. Yeah. And you came charging back 
to this final question, Scott. Huh. So does that make, what are we at? Six questions now? Am I three and three? Well, the, you're three and three. This okay. is the seventh question to the C if you know the UFL. So this will get me into the USFL, XFL, UFL playoffs uh, championship here if I. If yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And then you'd be swarmed by fans and yeah. they're, they're like, I thought I was a Stallion fan, but no, I'm a Brennan fan. Yeah, okay? me and Jake Bates will be hanging out all night doing shots. Oh, man, Jake yeah. Bates parties. They don't stop, my friend. Oh, uh, well, I've heard. I've heard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Scott, your final question. In total, 17 teams have played in the most recent USFL, XFL, and UFL. How many of these teams do not have a winning record in the regular season, which is 500 or under is it a 10 teams is it b 11 is it c 12 or is it d 13 i mean everyone knows everyone knows it's 12 that is the clear answer okay scott so there's 17 teams how many do you want me to go through the ones with uh winning records or you want me to go through the ones that didn't have winning records Oh, I don't know, Mike. What would what would float your Be boat faster? More? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I get the feeling, Scott. It is. I'll go with winning record. So the 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 juggernauts that are the Birmingham Stallions, their total regular season record is twenty six and four. Of course, they cannot be stopped. I I mean, they're going yep. for a four, Pete. Clearly, yep. Uh, the St. Louis Battlehawks, they are fourteen and six. Duh. Yeah, everyone years. knows that. Everyone knows that. It's like. I don't know. How yeah. many Super Bowls did Brady win? Everybody knows that. Yeah. Uh the DC Defenders, they were 13 and 7 in uh, their lifetime. So right now we got sure. three. So now we're we're going to the teams that no longer exist, but they have a winning record. They exist in our heart, though. Of course, of course. Uh the New Jersey Generals went 12 and 8 before they folded. Of Scott. course. I was there shirtless. Uh, uh huh. I was the G. I was the G in the generals, uh, you know, ah, fan group. First spot, best spot. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Orleans Breakers were thirteen and seven, and the Seattle Sea Dragons were seven and three in their one lone season, which means there are eleven teams that do not have a winning record. I'm sorry, Scott. The answer was B. I was off by one team. Yeah. Who only you would put two numbers right next to each other. You know, I, I put I, four neck numbers next to each I other. Met, I 10, meant 10, 11, 12, 13. I meant I meant eleven. You knew I meant eleven. Oh, I oh, forget. Okay. But you didn't know about the initial expansion team that is not even part of internet history. Oh. Um, yeah. You didn't know about the the main uh, Marauders. They were a famous team. Oh. That, they went sixteen and zero every single year for thirty seven years, and then they really it up. They went undefeated, um, and that's kind of the reason those leagues didn't really pan out yeah. because no the one Marauders really, just destroyed everybody. I yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't really worth following. So um, once again, I know a little bit more than you, but I understand <laughs> it was a really good quiz for an amateur. So. I, I mean, I, I tried to stump you, but I, I see the faults in my way. So I give you a golf clap, and uh, I, Scott, I, I just got to – I guess we got to keep podcasting until 2025 UFL season starts. Well, thanks again. That's probably like the 37th quiz I've lost on this uh, show here. Um, so, Mike, um, let's get out of here so I could go drown my sorrows. Uh, oh. Anything to promote? Uh, I will report. Blah, 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 blah. Who are you reporting? I will, <laughs> <laughs> I'm reporting live, damn it! Because <laughs> I'm not the way. I will promote uh, the green room in Austell, Georgia. Uh, my wife goes there weekly for their open mics. Uh, there's just such a good musical vibe there. They have a stage. They have a real pizza oven where they make some real great, delicious pizzas that uh, we have. Every lunch when she goes out there and perform, there's just such a good vibe. They have many craft beers on hand for you to try out. It's such a beautiful room to try out. So if you're around the Austell, Georgia area, why don't you go into the green room? And I will promote quickly. I am on a show, and there's not many of them these days, taking a little time off um, 
for this old baby thing, but I am at um, Old York Cellars in Hunterdon County um, in New Jersey um, on July 6th. Come on out. It's a great winery, um, really cool comedy room. Uh, so come on out to that. It's a Saturday. There's no excuse. It's following July 4th weekend. Great weekend to come out for a comedy show. Go look at Old York Cellars, I believe, .com or Google it. You know, you'll find it. So come on out and I'll be featuring there. So, so that's it, guys. We are back. We're trying to piece this together as we navigate through uh, child and whatnot. Mike's got solo episodes in the can that you might see in the uh, in the sub stack that we're going we're gonna to throw out there. Speaking of that, subscribe to the sub stack. And other than that, guys, life is funny. Laugh at it. Keep the wind at your back. Bye bye. Now, I just had to figure out what I do to a vagina sound wise so I can get popular. Hawk. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> 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 <laughs>